Now, the next question under how to establish myself, this, happened to be, uh, this question happened to be asked by a young female. So as I go through it, I am going to give some of the answer in a way that pertains particularly to young women. The question is, which steps should I follow to live a productive life as I age and mature for decades to come? Good question, right? Which steps should I follow to live a productive life as I age and mature for decades to come? That's how we know they're a young person. An older person be like, over the next decade. But they feel like they got decades, you know, so that's how you know it's a younger person, amen? <laughs> now, go with me to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to find the answer, and we're going to spend a few minutes on the answer in Philippians chapter 2. Now, the an this is the, the answer, and then we're going to chase the answer, okay? To live a productive life all your life for decades to come. You must establish and maintain your Christian walk. To live a successful life or productive life for decades to come, you must establish and maintain your Christian walk. Now, let me tell you how I define a Christian walk. It is a simple, scriptural, Christ-centered way to live. You're going to have to develop a simple, scriptural, Christ-centered way to live. Now, most of us in here who are Christians and have been Christians and have been successful through the decades, it's because we have developed a very simple, scriptural, Christ-centered way to live. It's simple. The average successful Christian has some basic Christian principles that they live by. A few scriptures that they always go to. A few instructions that God has spoken to their heart. It's very simple, it's scriptural, and it's Christ-centered. Now, you have to establish your own Christian walk. No one can do that for you. Okay, that's between you and God. That's between you and God. Nobody can establish your Christian walk for you. God deals with us as children, and God speaks things to his children in a way that we understand it, can live by it, and can apply it. When I was uh, a little boy, God spoke a scripture to my heart, and really it governs a lot of my life even to this day. That scripture is avoid evil, do good, seek peace, and pursue it. And a lot of what I do, even as a grown man, came when I was just 11 years old, something about that, I didn't even know it was in the Bible. God just spoke it to my heart. And then I found out it was in the Bible later. But a lot of who I am today comes just from very simple scriptural things that God has spoken to my heart over the years, and I just held on to them. And God will speak to your heart. Now, the scriptural support for that is in Philippians 2. Look at verse number 12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So watch this. As a young adult, your Christian walk cannot be dependent on the presence of another person. As a young adult, your Christian walk cannot be dependent on the presence of another person. In other words, if they there, I'm doing all right. If they not there, I'm not doing all right. He says, not only in my presence, but also in my absence. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Or in other words, with reverence and respect for God. For it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Work out your salvation because it's God who's going to work in you. It's God working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, I'm going to give you five things really quickly. Y'all ready for them? Let's call these the big five. I'm going to give you five things that I share often 
that will help you throughout the decades to live a productive life. Number one, establish a standard for your life. Now y'all have heard me say this 100,000 times because it's important. You must establish a standard for your life, for every aspect of your life, according to the Word of God. You must establish a standard for your life according to the Word of God. Every person, see, you can't just take somebody else's, well, what do you do? You have to establish some standards for your life according to the Word of God. Now, I'm going to give you three words that will help you establish because, see, the thing is, I've been teaching this, teaching this, teaching this, teaching this, teaching this, but a lot of us still don't have a standard for our lives. And it's evident in the choices that we make because a standard eliminates bad choices. You, you can't do some of the stuff you're doing and you say you live a, a life where you have a standard because standards eliminate bad choices. Huh, pastor? If, if this is my standard and it's here and the choice is here, I can't make that choice. That choice is eliminated. I can only make choices here or higher. See, when you don't have a standard, all options are on the table. But once you have a standard, only things at the level of your standard and higher are an option. So I hear people say, well, I'm a person of principle. Not making that choice, you're not. Well, when I was pressed, see, a standard doesn't, doesn't factor in pressure, what you didn't expect. Well, it's been a long time. See, it doesn't factor. A standard is set. It's unmovable. It, standards can only go up. They can't go down. See, a standard can only go up. A standards can only be raised. They can't be lowered. Come on, church. This is, you want to live a successful life, you need a standard. You need a standard. Now, I'm, I told you my three words, righteous, holy, and godly. Those are my three words. Y'all like those three words? Okay. You should establish a standard for your life to make sure that everything you do is righteous, holy, and godly. Don't you like those three words? I tell them to young women all the time. They ask me questions, especially about uh, young men. I say, righteous, holy, godly. Huh? Righteous, holy, godly. See? Righteous. The standard for your life should be righteous. In other words, in what I'm doing, is what I'm doing, can, be, can it be accepted and approved by God? That's righteous. Will God accept it? Will he be approved? Will he approve of it? Not what, what my mother thinks, not what my cousin thinks, not what my girlfriends think, not what the fellas think. Will God accept and approve what I'm about to do? See, righteous means that sin is not involved. I'm not giving place to the devil. I'm avoiding the appearance of evil. Righteous means I'm not sinning. I'm not giving place to the devil. And I'm avoiding the appearance of evil. Pastor, I met somebody. Righteous. You can't sin. Don't give place, because if you give place, you're going to sin and avoid the appearance of evil because you're a Christian. You don't want it to look bad. So it doesn't matter that we weren't doing nothing. If you're coming out of a dark room, you may have been praying, but that don't look good. <laughs> we shut off the lights to shut out distraction. Cut on the lights and be distracted. Righteous, holy, godly. See? How do you meet somebody? Righteous, holy, godly. I don't know. You meet people all different times away. There's no rules on how to meet somebody. Sometimes you meet people in the vestibule. Sometimes you meet them after church. Sometimes you meet them at the grocery store. Sometimes you meet, you meet people all sorts of ways. There's no rule by which Christians, how they meet. Righteous. However I meet you, it's not going to be in sin. I'm not going to get place to the devil. 
and I'm going to avoid the appearance of evil. And I'm talking to grown-ups now. Children, your rule is parents, parents, parents. Okay? <laughs> like that? Parents determine what's righteous. Parents determine what's holy. And the parents say that is or is not godly. I'm talking to grown-ups now. Then holy. Holy just means to be pure and clean on the inside. So whatever I do, I have to make sure that I'm right on the inside. See, because I can be righteous and not be holy. In other words, I can uh, bring you to church, but still be manipulative in my actions. So the actions look righteous, but the heart is not pure. And one of the things that, because uh, this was asked by a young woman, one of the things you have to do is keep your heart holy. You have to keep your heart pure and clean. And one of the things you have to guard against is allowing somebody the influence in your heart. Okay? Because once you allow them influence in your heart, it, it's going to be hard to keep your standard. And then the third one is godly. You should, whatever you do, you should make sure that you're doing it in a way that you're mindful to have reverence and respect for God. You should be doing it in a way that you're mindful to have reverence and respect for God. Righteous, holy, godly. Now, young adults, it's your job to establish a standard for your life. It is not, you're, you are a young adult. It is not, listen to me, it is not some other grown-up's responsibility to establish a standard for your life. That's your job. Now, if you're living with a grown-up, you have to obey the rules that that grown-up set for you to live there. But the standard for your life has to be set by you has to be set by you because you got to grow up and you can't grow up as an adult if another adult, an adult has made you their child because you're no longer a child. You're an adult and you have to establish a standard for your life based on the word of God. It is the role of older adults in your life, whether you think of them as an authority figure or whatever, to provide counsel for you. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Make sure you know what you ought to consider. Make sure you've looked at it from all sides. Present to you what uh, they believe the will of God is in that situation based on the wisdom and the knowledge and experience that they have throughout the years. But as a young adult, your standard, that, that you have to set that. Nobody can do that for you. And one of the things I tell all young adults when they come into my office, choice is with you. Choice doesn't rest with me. I'll give you what to think about, what you ought to consider, what you ought to look at, what the Word of God says. But choice is, that's, you have to live your life. Guess what? This will help get rid of some of my counseling sessions. I don't tell people what to do in counseling. So if you come into me to for me to tell you what to do, please cancel in the morning. I don't tell people what to do. I tell you what you ought to think about. I tell you what you ought to consider. I ask you some questions. Have you looked at X, Y, Z, one, two, three? I tell you what the Bible says. I remind you what I've taught, but I end everyone saying, now whatever you do, that's on you. See, everybody in here, young adult, whatever you do, that's on you. Now, what I want you to do is have a good standard and live by it. But if you don't do it, that's on you. I'm not going to go to hell because you got in a strange bed with somebody. That's on you. I'm going to tell you, you need to get out of strange beds. I can't make you. See, there's no point in me even telling you what to do because I can't make you do it. So no need telling you what to do if I can't make you do it. I'll tell you that it's highly recommended. <laughs> that you stop doing that. I can tell you what I think is going to happen if you keep on doing it. Choice rest with you.